Welcome again to our Success Connection workshop on academic program and scholarship personal statements. So this workshop is a series, part of a series of workshops that we are running this semester. Um, we're coordinating with all of our sister campuses in the UH Community College system to put together this series of workshops. Um, so just to let you know, we do have um, workshops coming up in the future and we'll share the link um, for how you can save those Zoom links to your Google Calendar if you want. Um, but before we get started with um, the presentation today, we just wanna do a few housekeeping reminders. Um, so first, this will be an interactive session. So we encourage you to use your video and to unmute yourself during discussions if you'd like. We also encourage you to feel free to ask questions at any time. Um, you can do that by unmuting yourself, or if you'd like to put your question in the chat box, I'll make sure that we um, respond to it. <clears throat> and then again, just as a reminder, um, we'll be recording this session for future use so that students in the future can refer to this workshop. Um, and then finally, before we get started with our content today, we just want to remind you that if you need additional writing support, including support for your personal statements, you can always uh, visit our WCC Writing Lab, which right now is completely virtual. So we provide free virtual peer tutoring. We offer appointments and drop-in tutoring. We are available via video, audio, and chat over Zoom. And we offer hours Monday through Saturday and evening uh, and even evening hours. <clears throat> there is also another um, service that's available to you as UH Community College students called tutor.com. They offer free virtual tutoring as well. They're available 24 seven. One of the main differences though, is that tutor.com is chat-based tutoring. Whereas with our writing lab, you can, um, we have video, audio and chat, and you can talk um, directly with one of our peer tutors. And so you'll see that link below. I'll also put it in the chat box um, so that you can refer to that link a little bit later on. All right. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to our guest presenter today. Um, I'll let him introduce himself, but I'll you know, pre-introduce him. This is Lance Ueda, who is one of WCC's um, English uh, instructors. So Lance, you can feel free to take, take it away. I just wanted to start with a quote from a former student. This is Pam Nakane Lua, who um, started at Windward and then by um, working very hard and treating uh, the scholarship and program application process kind of like a class um, by putting it on her schedule and thinking about it as part of her weekly work. Um, she got all, all the funding she needed to uh, cover her bachelor's and master's degree. She got a um, master of social work. Um, so she says, but if you, if you spend two hours working on a scholarship application and someone gives you $1,000 that breaks down to $500 an hour, that's a very optimistic kind of um, pay rate, obviously, right? <laughs> but um, uh, that, you know, that's, that's just one way to start thinking about it. Um, you have to put time in, but you can get a, a nice reward at the end. Um, it's not a guaranteed reward, but um, it's something. It's it's a it's a fun way to kind of shift your thinking about. Oh, you know, and one way to think about it is, well, this is an annoying requirement, right? But another way to think about it is, um, it is work that you're putting in for, um, you know, what what you hope is going to be a good outcome. Um, okay. So, uh, why why do we have to write these personal statements? Again, one, one way to think about it is, well, your English teacher wants to punish you and make you suffer. <laughs> or the scholarship committee wants to have, you know, wants to inflict pain and, and punishment. Um, but the other way to think about it is um, the per personal statement is the last thing that's under your control uh, when you are applying to that, uh, the dream academic program that you want to get into, or when you're um, asking people to help fund your your future goals and endeavors. Okay, um, it's the last thing under your control. Um, there are other things that were under your control until recently, such as I have here in this little paragraph, such as your GPA, such as what kind of classes you've taken so far. Um, I think there's some people from the acting program in the participants, such as you know what kind of shows you've been in, right? But that's not in, the, in your control necessarily anymore between right now 
and then when the scholarship application or the program application is due and then for some of us that's in march right the the uh common application deadline is coming up so you know i mean you, you can continue to do well in classes you can continue to do your best work in whatever endeavor you're currently involved with um, but then the the outcomes that the people are going to be evaluating are kind of already mostly set right you can't change your gpa from last semester um, and so the statement of purpose, their personal statement is your last chance to put your good foot forward. And so if the purpose is not really to make money, you know, through writing some miraculous essay, and it's not really um, to get in, right? Lots of other factors uh, also contribute to getting in. Um, what, I, what I want to suggest to everyone this morning is the purpose of a personal statement is number one, the number one purpose is to make the reader remember you and preferably like you. <laughs> okay, you can make someone remember you by, uh, hate, you know, if they hate you, but that's that's mm -hmm. not your advantage. Um, okay, so make the reader remember you is number one. Number two is show that you are moving forward in some way. Okay, so the, you know, the, the standard way is to say things like, I, I'm a terrific student and I've achieved all these achievements. That's fine, but it doesn't have to be that. It can be moving forward in your personal way that you're moving forward. So um, there's, there's no kind of set guideline for what way you're moving forward. It is just that you're moving forward in your way. <clears throat> okay, three is you wanna show your strengths or your personal assets or abilities, your experiences, your unique personality, your goals um, in the best possible light okay, to give you a good chance of being selected in the case where other criteria, right? Your financial needs, your, um, your performance, you know, some places have very specific performance outcomes they want, right? Have you been in, have you had this kind of experience? Have you taken this kind of course? Did you do all of your, you know, your math? <laughs> Did you do all of your uh, social work 200, that kind of thing, right? So in, in the case that all that other stuff is tied, then your personal statement gives you um, a good chance to break the tie. And then also uh, number four, people, when they're selecting a group of students to put under their scholarship or to include in their program, they want a well-rounded group usually. And so the more that you can kind of give information about yourself and why you're a fun, unique, interesting person, um, the better. All right, that was a lot of blabbing. Anybody have any questions so far? Stop me at any time, or you can put it in the chat. Um, all right, so I know I, I asked yes. already, but I know I asked her, but where are you broadcasting from? Oh, I'm I'm in this is my house. Oh, wait, you oh. can't see it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm in Kailua. Oh, okay. Behind Safeway. Okay. Okay. I got here. Right. Hi, I have a, uh, I had a question about the previous slide. Oh, yeah, sure. So, of those four, would you say one is more important than the other or? What's the most important one of the four? Um, so you want, hmm, I'll say that the most important is number one, right? So getting your person's attention, getting the reader's attention. But what you're going to end up writing the most about is number uh, two, numbers two and three. So the, the most important thing overall, and then what you're going to start out doing is number one, but then by the time you're done, so, th and, and then we'll, we'll sort of go through like what the typical structure of mm -hmm. the writing is, but it sort of generally follows these first three steps. So number one is sort of a memorable incident from your memory or experience or observation. And then that, but then that's only like maybe half a page. Uh, and oh. then two and three, are where you're gonna spend the bulk of it, right? Where you're talking about how you're moving forward in whatever way, how you are learning or or move or or growing or improving and and the things that you set yourself to grow and improve at. Um, and then how that sort of relates to your future your future goals. But um if you start if you start only with that, then I think you put yourself at a disadvantage if you don't have this personal connection part. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah, that's a great question. Oh yeah, and then chat says, if you don't want to unmute, you can put them in the chat. Oh, sorry, go ahead. We also have a raised hand, Eva Lani. Oh, fun, how are you, Lani? Hi, hi. Uh, so is there a general guideline on the length of a personal statement? And also, yeah. um, it, can you start off a personal statement with like a short quote and then expound on that? Oh yeah, sure. Okay, so the short quote question is yes, definitely. Sure, absolutely. Um, and then uh, my my personal um, recommendation is uh, that you um, shoot for two pages double space. That's the most uh, uh, that's the most flexible uh, um, starting length um, because so I think that's the most flexible starting length because often you will be asked to submit a, a personal statement that's between one and two pages. Um, and so if, and then, and then that gives you the most kind of flexibility in terms of spacing. Uh, sometimes the committee won't specify double spaced or single spaced, right? So if you have a two page double spaced, uh, essay to start with, then you can turn in a two page double spaced one. You can turn in a one page single spaced one. Um, and so, so, you know, you can, you can, and then, and then to fit it in, you can, uh, play around with margins and character spacing, that kind of thing. Uh, and then, okay, and then um, citations, you don't have to do formal like a APA MLA style citations, but um, if you're putting that quote in, you can, you can um, just say, uh, you know, who, who said it. Uh, fun. All right. Uh, other questions? You know, I forgot I was going to um, put a handout in the chat. Do, 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 do. Okay. Are you putting the personal statement guide? Yeah. Okay. So um, that long URL in the chat is the, uh, is the little handout um, that sort of condenses all of the fun stuff that we're chatting about. All right, um, so from the reader's perspective, reading a personal statement is sort of like um, remembering someone you met. Um, and then what, what you want your reader to get out of it is to be able to say, oh, I, I remember this person, I remember their face. And then you know, since that you can't see the person's face generally when you're, when you're doing personal statement reading, um, then something else has to stand out, right? Since you haven't met them, they, they won't see, uh, how you hold yourself or what kind of clothes you wear, all those, all those things that we typically rely on to remember people. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is as the reader, uh, reading personal statements is like meeting someone after you spent seven days meeting 10 million billion other people who all, many of whom said the same thing. Hello, my name is George. I go to Winwood Community College. My GPA is 4.0. I want to be a chemist, right? Those things are all applicable and they have to be mentioned somehow, but those are in the application form, right? You filled out this annoying long application form and you gave them your address and your blood type and your DNA sample, whatever. Um, and so the personal statement is separate from that, right? They already know your name and they already know where you go to school. So um, uh, you don't ne necessarily need to say all those things again. And the other thing to think about is everybody is doing that um, and you want to stand out a little bit more. Okay, um, so picture this sad, tired lady, or you can picture me being sad and tired and bald instead of having beautiful long hair. And think about how your audience is tired and hungry and you want to say something to her that uh, other people probably couldn't have said, right? Everybody else is saying their name and saying how high their grades are and those kinds of things. Um, so what kinds of things should you or can you be saying? Well, I have some um, examples here and uh, I'm gonna ask for a couple of volunteer readers. Uh, ooh, fun, Isaiah, you talked before. Can you read this first? Um, oh, so before Isaiah starts reading, uh, the quiz question is, which example was written by artificial intelligence writer 
uh, GPT-2. If, if after this um, presentation, you want to go online and Google GPT-2 or GPT-3 is actually the, the current um, generation, it's an AI program that writes surprisingly well. And now you have to guess which one wrote. I have two samples for you. So um, Isaiah, do you mind re reading this one, example one? Yeah, sure. So example one, I've always been a hardworking student and it is because of this quality of mind that I've achieved my goals in academics so far, and I'll continue to do so. During high school, I developed an interest in economics and investing. Because I am motivated to, to succeed in my career, I have dedicated myself to getting good grades and performing well on my entrance exams. Henceforth, I decided to pursue business and economics as a double major for my undergraduate degree, and I have a goal to be accepted into the best universities that offer management studies. Thank you, thank you, excellent reading. Okay, and then how about uh, Ali, are you there? Okay, how about Kaimi? Oh, Ali, okay, Hi, she's unmuted. Okay. Fun, okay. Uh, do you mind reading example two? Yeah. So exciting. <laughs> it was 10 o'clock. From his bar stool, the manager shot me an annoyed look. Large speakers bellowed through the nearly empty room. My first fundraiser was a failure. I had booked the most popular band in town, negotiated a reasonable ticket price, rounded up fantastic door prizes, and advertised far in advance. What I hadn't done was involve anyone else in that decision-making process. The goal was worthy and the plan was sound, so I assumed people would jump on board. Acting alone and executing a plan had been efficient, but it had not inspired enthusiasm or built attendance. I learned that leading from the front isn't always the best way. Thank you, excellent. All right, uh, Marie, are you there? Do you mind giving a guess for the group? Uh, sure. Was number one the AI? Oh, that is an amazing guess. Uh, so that's the correct guess, although I tricked you, ha ha ha. All right, so the actual answer is neither was the, was an AI. Although I, I, I would say that the AI is probably, um, pro is you would be surprised. I bet the AI, AI would come up with something more specific than example one. Um, <clears throat> but example one is someone who shared their personal statement on Reddit. And then example two is my friend Anonymous and Mysteriosa. Um, and then, okay, so can someone remember what Anonymosa Mysteriosa wrote about? Marie, do you remember what Anonymosa Mysteriosa wrote about? I'm sorry, but no. <laughs> Darn it. Scott, do you remember what Anonymosa Mysteriosa wrote about? No. No? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do. Okay, well. Oh, who I does? Do. Yay. Who's speaking? I sorry. do. Uh, Alicia. The second, Alicia. Oh, Alicia, Hello. great. Hello. Um, she spoke about how she was about to make this big um, fundraiser or something like that. Oh, yeah. We're talking about the example, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. She talked about how um, she did it all by herself. And mm -hmm. maybe that wasn't the best idea because um, she didn't have any help. And it wasn't really like, not a lot of people knew about it. She thought they would, but nobody really turned out. So it turned out to be a bummer <laughs> in, a, in a way. So, yeah. Oh, yay. Terrific. Hey, fun. Okay. Does anybody remember what example one talked about? Their GPA and their past experiences in high school and how they want to go to college. Oh, yay. Okay. Very good. All right. Good memory. <laughs> Okay, would you say, uh, Tomlin, which one would you say is more memorable? I would say probably number two, because it actually has a story behind it and like a life lesson that is learned compared to number one, because number one just talks about how they really want to get into college, but okay. they don't have the funds. And this is yeah. why they should get into college, but yeah. Okay, fun, fun. Yeah, so, so I, that, well, and then I'm, I'm sort of leading everyone on, but that, that's sort of the hope. And I, I, you know, just from experience, uh, from reading lots of these um, for a long time, it's sort of my hobby. <laughs> uh, the, the ones with clearer stories do tend to be more memorable. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that leads me to this slide, which is that 
there's no such thing as a boring person, which, which I put in specifically because some students make these comments that upset me uh, along the lines of I'm a boring person, right? I, I actually, someone said this to me in class just like a week or two weeks ago, I'm boring. I was like, no, you're not boring. There's no such thing as a boring person. So I just want to reassure you that, um, you know, as long as you are willing to share something about yourself that you care about, um, it's, it's not boring, right? And in fact, it's probably more interesting for you to share. So the example in this slide is every Saturday morning, grandpa tried to get me to eat an ulu pancake. Right, just imagine somebody's grandpa force feeding them an experimental mushy pancake every Saturday because they're trying to use up the ulu <laughs> from the tree. Right, I mean, I, that could be way more interesting than, you know, I got dragged. Well, I mean, it depends on how you write it up, right? But that could be more interesting or at least as interesting as going skydiving, right? Especially if the ulu pancake kind of experience is more meaningful to you, right? If, if you don't, if you, if you really care about skydiving, then of course, you know, great, wonderful. Um, but if you're, if you're not someone who after that got into skydiving or, or, you know, did any more of it, then, um, what you want to do is to talk about the thing that actually relates to you. Okay. And I would suggest another way to imagine it is think about, um, so you're the topic and you're going to think about something you want the uptight sibling of your significant other or a very good friend to remember about you. Um, after, you know, you introduce yourself to them the first time, let's say it's your 10th conversation with your significant other's um, uptight sibling, and you want them to remember this thing about you that you learned X, or you realized Y, or you finally did the certain thing that um, you were building yourself up to do. And then now that relates to your present goal or your present um, uh, where you are in life in this certain way. Um, and so, you know, what, what, it, what that means is um, that you need to sort of skip ahead, think about what is it that I would share with a stranger and then skip all of it. <laughs> and then think about what do I want, what would I want to be able to share with someone who I'm connected to, who I want to look good for or, or look as if I'm, you know, kind of uh, in going in the right direction um, and share with them, um, which, you know, doesn't, it, it could, it feels for some people not intuitive or uncomfortable, but um, that's what, that's sort of what we need to uh, reframe the idea around. And then you want to, you know, try to seem good in some way. So either interesting, or if what you're talking about doesn't feel interesting enough to you, then you can also add in things about how you, how you're a thoughtful person, or you care about others, um, and have some kind of combination about that. But if you're super confident that you're the most brilliant, interesting person, that's great, too. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty. <clears throat> uh, these are topics that you typically see listed on um, college essay or personal statement essay uh, forms. And so I wanted to just give us a little um, taste or framework. Uh, you're, tip you're often asked, what are life experiences that led you to where you are today, either um, in college and the program that you're striving for, or in some specific kind of uh, thing that you're doing, detective training, if you're becoming a PI or something. Why did you choose this course? of study or career. Um, and then if you're going to a caring profession like social work, they definitely all, you always ask things like, uh, why, how are you concerned with your community or, or what sort of social problem are you concerned with? Um, and then if you're applying to Hawaii Community Foundation, they also ask these kinds of questions. Uh, what, uh, how are you concerned about your community or how have you helped others? How do you plan to give back? Um, these are just typical questions. Um, and regardless of how, so, you know, in, in the format that I'm going to suggest in a minute, uh, most of these areas will be covered, right? But um, no matter how or what kind of question you're addressing, starting out with a personal story uh, and then moving into um, what your current goals are and your, your um, well, your, your goals uh, and, and the programs that you want. Is, is a good way to approach no matter what. All right, so um, 
just to reiterate again, because I like repeating myself. Uh, you want to start with a, a narrative about an experience or a set of observations or about your family or friends. Um, and it does, so it doesn't have to be um, uh, directly related to the field that you're studying. Although the more related it is, the easier it is to make the connection to where you're headed. All right. So um, if you are going, so let's say you're, you want to be a veterinarian. <laughs> Um, it's easier if you start with the animal story, but you don't have to necessarily, right? So if your personal story is you killed your sister's fish while overfeeding them, and then uh, when she was at her friend's house, you went to the stream and caught a bunch of new fish with a bamboo pole from, uh, from Waimala stream, and then you hoped she wouldn't notice they were all tilapias now. That's a fun story. You can use that for being a bit, for being a veterinarian. You can use that for being, um, but you could also use it for being not a veterinarian. You could use it for getting into college, for becoming a teacher, right? As long as you have a memorable story um, that you learned from or that demonstrates something about you, and then you're able to connect it uh, to where you're headed, um, you can use whatever kind of story, right? It's much better than I love animals and I've always loved animals the end. Okay, it can lead directly to your interests and goals, but um, it doesn't necessarily have to. All right, so I have a list of um, sample topics on the following slide. So I'd like, uh, I'm gonna ask you to think about one of the topics based on what month you're born in, and then just ask yourself the question, um, what could someone have learned from this kind of experience? What could someone have learned from this kind of experience? And or what sort of personal quality um, could, uh, could be demonstrated by telling the story of that experience? Okay, so what could they have learned or what kind of personal quality could have come out uh, by talking about it? All right, so again, the questions are, what could be learned from this experience and what personal qualities could be demonstrated by reflecting on it? And then, so if you're born in January or February, can you think about, and these are all from um, my friends or family members' personal statements. Um, either some are like med school personal statements, some are uh, applying for a scholarship, some are uh, the, uh, the, my friend whose dad passed away, she was applying to law school. Okay, if you're born in January or February, can you do number one? If you're born in March and April, can you do number two, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so just think about um, what could be learned and what personal qualities could be demonstrated. And if you don't mind putting in the chat your number, so number four, and then what you think, uh, number four is hard. <laughs> okay, what do you think, if the person talked about the story of going hiking in some forest, what do you think they, what would that allow them to talk about? I learned this or, or this is what happened. And then what personal quality do you think they would end up talking about if they chose that as their opening, their opening narrative? I will try number six. I'll wait for one more minute or until we have a couple more suggestions in the chat. Oh, thank you, Isaiah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, how about one more chat message? All right. Oh, yeah, you know, I don't. Yeah, terrific. Okay, so oh yeah, oh, here we go. Okay, fine. So um, uh, keep on typing if you're typing. Thank you, thank you. Excellent. Oh, very nice. I think no one got number one. So I'll talk about number one. Number one was my friend Salil, and he uh, talked about, so uh, he was in a car accident and then glass from the window got in his eye and he turned his essay into a description of sitting there in the chair in the doctor's office as the doctor dug things, dug the glass out. <laughs> um, and then he said that he, as that experience, like he, I mean, it was obviously a little traumatizing, but he actually, um, became fascinated with the whole process of uh, basically what the doctor was going through, not just him, which was pretty fascinating. And he described, you know, having the, the light shining in his eye and sitting in the chair and the doctors, you know, what I mean, not stabbing his face, but <laughs> doing whatever doctors do when they dig glass out of him. Yeah. Uh, which, which let him talk about being interested in uh, medical treatments and helping patients understand what's happening to them. All right, fine. So for number two, Capella says, uh, learning how to play the piano would let the person talk about never giving up, uh, being hardworking and creative and persistent. Excellent. That's exactly what that person did. Um, no one got number three, but uh, that was my friend Queenie. She, um, so her dad died uh, when she was in high school and it wasn't a good experience and people weren't helpful. And so she wrote about wanting to go into health law. Uh, okay, four, uh, Scott says love of nature, ecosystems, and then um, oh, restoration. And then the person could demonstrate perseverance and overcoming obstacles. Kaimi said a similar thing. They could learn how they felt connected to nature. Um, and how nature can help us live better. Excellent. And Alicia said, uh, number four, they can learn how to move forward. Oh, yeah, that's great. Moving forward is, is like the actual literal hiking. Terrific. Uh, Ali said, number five, um, about hating your family, restaurant, personal space and individuality. That's great. Getting more, getting to be more independent and perseverant. And then Isaiah also had number five, importance of family and perseverance. Oh, that's fine. And this, both of you said perseverance, which is great. And then number six, Marie said curiosity about acting or fighting. And then contributions of different characters to a storyline, sharing stories from culture, cherishing moments with family. Great. Wonderful. Okay. Wow. That turned out really well. I like your responses. Very good. Um, <clears throat> All right, so here are some sample first lines from those topics. Uh, the piano guy said, Bach, Fugue, and B-flat minor is a masterpiece of 10 fingers playing five interwoven voices. Uh, oh, and then this one wasn't included. Um, Excited and eager to get my feet wet, I anxiously wait for all parties to arrive on their way or engineers, project and construction managers and members of the technical evaluation board and fellow employees. I, I, I included this one at the last minute because I wanted to show the second one. I wanted to show an example of someone talking about an experience that is super related um, to their goal. Uh, so these, right, no one wants to become a professional car crasher. Uh, but you can, if, if you, if you do have a super relevant experience, you would, you would want to talk about this one is my sister-in-law applying to, um, to business school. And she was already working as a, a civilian employee for the Navy. And so she wanted to write about a job experience, which, which is, which is great too. If you have experience, um, let's say you've already been volunteering in a vet tech clinic 
And now you are writing your personal statement to to get in or to stay in the vet tech program, then you know you, you can of course write about one of those experiences, um, but you don't have to. All right, so um, here is our formula. And again, um, the general page length that you can work in is maybe two pages double spaced. So if that's, if that's the general length, then the first quarter, so this is half a page, is your personal story. Uh, and then maybe another half a page is kind of what the moral of the story is. So follow up with what the story means to you and what you learned. And then um, three, explain how the moral of the story relates to your success or progress and how it shows you'll reach your goals. Uh, and so that's the last page. So uh, if, we, if you think back to um, one of those very first slides that uh, Isaiah asked about, I would say this personal story that you start with is pretty important, right? For the person to remember you and feel, you know, like they're uh, being able to escape from escape is, is maybe too harsh, but is get a, you know, you, the, the reader is having some variety from some of the other personal statements that are sort of the, the, the general, my name is, and my, my, I go to this school. Th those personal statements kind of run into each other and, and sort of begin to uh, sort of um, get confusable with each other. Um, so you, you do want definitely, in my opinion, to have this personal story um, up front, but then that's only, that's not going to be the main uh, meat of it. Uh, so that's just the first quarter. Um, all right. Any any questions so far? That was a lot of blabbing. All right. Uh, put the question in the chat if you have it. Okay. So here is an example. Here's a real fun example of um, the initial story, and then they have, you have to write like a, a transition follow up paragraph, basically. Right. So uh, the story, the first, the, the story, it starts out uh, whenever I caught the bus to and from school, I read a Star Wars book. Whenever I did my homework, I listened to Star Wars podcasts. How so when I signed up for FAFSA, filled out scholarships, typed my personal essays, some Star Wars correlation existed within my working habits. Through this tango of fiction and reality, I became a successful force, pun intended. <laughs> And then the follow-up is succeeding in school is more than grades and surviving the final. It takes strategic planning, energy, and confidence to obtain your, your ambitions. Grand Moff Tarkin, regarded as one of the greatest villains in Star Wars, helped inspire me to plan out smaller goals when achieving better, bigger tasks and always to look for an, an opportunity to excel. <clears throat> okay, so uh, give the story and then... Um, tell the reader what you think the moral of the story is so that it's not up to them to decide. Okay, um, some general formatting suggestions. So I suggested um, two pages, but you know, obviously that's uh, at your discretion. Um, what I what you know, what I would also suggest is if you're going to go longer than two pages, then sort of counterintuitively, you want to have a short timeline, um, especially if you are not 100% convinced of your awesomeness as a writer. Okay, if you have a long timeline, you wanna start out from the moment of your conception in a hot tub, then it's good for you to be an awesome writer who, when I read your personal essay, uh, your personal statement, I will cry and have to go hide in my office to not um, drip tears on you. <clears throat> Okay. Otherwise, if the Lance cryometer is uncertain, then you want a shorter timeline, probably just just for that first story. Um, mostly because I mean that's not going to be the majority of your essay, right? So it's the first quarter, um, so it's just easier. And then also, it's easier generally to write about a shorter experience rather than to tell your whole life story. Um, but uh, that's sort of up to you. That that's kind of just general advice from experience. All right, and then we already practiced doing this, but just to reiterate, 
um, you need to definitely tell what the moral of the story is. So you can't just tell a story about, I learned to play the piano. Now, please give me a thousand dollars. You have to say what, what playing the piano means in terms of your personal qualities uh, or your goals for the future. Okay. And then um, I'm going to give Pam the last word. And uh, we have some time for questions and then also um, some writing exercises if you would want to get started doing a little writing exercise. Okay, but Pam says, we're culturally sensitive to talking about ourselves in Hawaii. Most of us were not brought up to brag, but in this case, you need to readjust your thinking and get comfortable with bragging. If you cannot articulate where you're going and where you've been, they will not know that you are worthy of their money or, or of being in their, being in their uh, respiratory therapist program. All right. In the last 15 minutes, you can leave with some, um, some ideas so that you're not totally empty handed. All right. So if you, if you folks don't mind having a piece of paper or opening up your Microsoft Word window or your, your Google Docs window, um, and then I want you to picture someone you love who is younger than you. Okay, so this can be your, your kid or your niece or nephew or your neighbor or your friend. Or if you can't think of anyone, then you have to imagine someone who you're going to, who will become your kid one way or another. Okay. All right. Everybody have a young person in mind. Think of someone you want to address this to. Oh, okay. Thanks, Alicia. All right. Okay. Then I want you to imagine a psychic rabbit who comes down from the sky to tell you you will be transported into Star Trek and then spend the rest of your life adventuring with Captain Janeway or Cisco or someone. And you only have a week left to figure out what to do in your current life in Hawaii. Okay. So if you want to take revenge on your neighbor or say goodbye to your family. But one of the things you're going to do in your last week pre-Star Trek is you're going to write out um, a, a long list of stories from your life that can be funny stories or serious stories or crazy, sad, memorable stories that you would have told this young person, right? So your kid or your niece, nephew, or this your neighbor who you're going to kidnap over the course of their lifetime. Okay, So even if your kid is you know, five years old now, think about if I would want them to know about this thing that I experienced or this, this idea that I had when they grow up, then all of those stories should be included also. Okay, but right now, um, just think about a list of memorable stories about your life that you would want to spend your psychic rabbit week uh, jotting down and thinking through before Scotty beams you up. Okay, a list of memorable stories uh, so that you have sort of a long list to choose from in terms of this is a memorable thing that happened to me. Uh, these are some people who mattered to me. This is some fun thing that I learned. Uh, this is something I did because I was in love with someone and they convinced me. Uh, this was a random experience I had. Um, anything that you might want to pass on to your beloved young person. And I'll time you for a few minutes. Does everyone have at least one thing? Yeah, okay. Then um, the next step and um, these things don't have to only be done in kind of linear order, right? You can go back and forth and keep on adding to your list and come back to this exercise two part as much as you need to. It could be recursive. Okay, so then um, have a little two column thing like how we did in one of the previous slides and then uh, list out the stories, whichever ones seem the most promising. Or if you wanna use the same piece of paper and write out on the, the side of your list, that's fine too. And then in the second column or next to the story that seems promising, uh, try to identify a best quality about yourself or something that you learned about yourself or, or in general 
um, next to the story that you would want to write about. We only have five minutes left. I'm going to just show the last slide, which is one last exercise, um, and that is to try to write multiple first lines, which seems weird if you haven't done it before, but I really like this as a writing activity. Uh, just try to write different ones to see if you can get different angles into telling the narrative. And the more first lines you write, the, the more kind of different kinds of tone and um, style you might uh, discover. Hey, Lance. Yes. Um, what are your thoughts for um, personal statements written in more than one language? Oh. Is that too much, like to, because um, I, I come from a, I came from a Hawaiian immersion school and I felt comfortable writing my paper in Hawaiian. Yeah. And then I knew that I would have to translate that to English because, you know, I can't assume that the reader knows what I'm saying. So yeah, yeah. is that like overkill though? Like to send it No, two? I don't think so. No. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's great. Yeah. So you gave, you, you turned in two copies? Yeah, I did. <laughs> in yeah, high, that's... yeah, in high school. Well, that's one. Yeah, I personally, I, would... I think that's amazing. Yeah, cool. it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How about Isaiah? You have a sentence. Oh yeah, I do. Let me try it. Oh fun. So, I'll never forget the experience of one of my two T's telling me that they got accepted to the social work program at UH Manoa. Oh, terrific. Oh, very good. Oh, I like it. Good, good, good. Fun. Thanks, everyone, for sharing and participating. Yeah, thanks, good everyone, luck. for joining us today. Um, also, the um, link that we have in the chat box, you can also view our upcoming Success Connection workshops. We have one next week that I'll be facilitating on study skills. And then we have a few others that Lance will be facilitating in the future. So don't forget to check that out. And then um, as a final reminder, please leave us some feedback before you leave. We'd love to know your thoughts and um, we'll use your feedback to improve our workshops in the future. So thanks everyone for coming. We really appreciate it. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording right now.